Welcome to Let's Talk About Gay Stuff. Woo! Gay stuff. Let's talk. Let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about gay. Let's talk about gay stuff. No. That's Stick not. to your day job. I'm, still, I'm <laughs> trying. One of these days you can, are going to approve of it. We are the podcast where we, we. This is the podcast where we talk about gay stuff and discuss the week in LGBT plus history. We are Thomas. Tony. Kendall. Howdy. Uh, this week we're hey. reviewing the week of October 6th through October 12th. And really. We're going to try to make up some time from last week because we had a two-hour episode last week, so we're probably going to distill this down, unless you guys, you girls are long-winded. We're going to talk about National Coming Out Day. I think that's it. I think we're finished and for this episode. <laughs> specifically, we're going to spend some time talking about our coming out journeys, so that'll be uh, interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to learn about you guys in terms of how you, how you came out. And how Hashtag you sh- me too. Pound me too. Pound me too. How you shared that story with other folks. Uh, if you haven't listened to our latest quiz show episode... Uh, we just released one uh, last week with uh, Tammy Wallace from the Houston LGBT Chamber of Commerce and in focus group. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. And I mean, it was a prequel to we invited her just to talk about the chamber and things, but she shared her coming out story. Yeah, so it was a good, like, if you're one of a Impromptu. Woman, she wasn't even, yeah. A woman's perspective. And it was a great story. Like, I was just fascinated listening to that. Like, I know Tammy from, from the chamber, uh, but yeah, it was really it was a really personal story. So, um, yeah, take a listen to that. Spoiler again. alert, she's a lesbian. What? Cute so, lesbian. Get ready for that. Ooh. All right. So before we get into business, a quick reminder to everyone, especially you Houstonians and folks in Texas, Monday, October the 7th, that's tomorrow, if you're listening on Sunday or listening today on Monday, October the 7th, uh, is the last day to register to vote in Texas for the November 5th election. Houston, we have the mayor. 2019. 2019. Yeah. So in Houston, what's going on in Houston? Mayor's election. Yeah. So race. if you're not registered to vote, you should vote. If you're, you should be like Tony. Tony reg- votes in every election, special elections. Yes, when there's like 85 people to vote in the whole election, yeah. I'm one. So if you don't like your elected officials, uh, blame Tony because he's the only one who votes. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and if you're not a Houstonian, still register to vote. Check out your your Just register schedule. Just do it a year schedule. early. Get it Just get so it taken yeah. care of because 2020 is going to be a year in which you're going to want to register. To vote. And, Keep America great, And, and folks. vote to uh, <laughs> know about that. Well, I don't know what's going to go down. So this, well, not this week. So It'll be Elizabeth Warren versus Mike Pence. We are, you know, I'm seeing more and more <clears throat> Elizabeth Warren stickers around. Let's, She's going to be the nominee. Let's I talk about so. this. Let's talk about, before we talk about our gay stuff, let's talk about what's going on in presidential politics. We got a a trending, on the Democratic side, we've got a trending Elizabeth Warren. She is, uh, she is rising in the polls. I guess my, is, yeah. my question to you guys, is she... Is she Peaking too soon. Uh, I think it's a no. slow and steady rise. I think, you know, what, like what we've seen in past presidential elections, especially on the Republican side a couple times, is somebody announces and they are the darling child. They have like 70 percent, you know, of the uh, poll. And then a month later, they're down to 10. You remember 2012 when that happened? My girl Kamala Harris is down to like 3%. She but, got yeah. up but to second place. Remember in 2012, it was like whack-a-mole. You had, uh, what's his name? Uh, the not uh, the pizza Herman guy, Cain. Herman Cain. He was at the top of the list. And then uh, the lady, Michelle Bachman. Michelle Bachman, Bachman yeah. was at the top of the list. And I remember Rick when Santorum. she announced, they were like, she's the nominee. She's going to be. crazy. But it yeah. was like whack-a-mole. As soon as they like yeah. hit to the top, that's why I was asking, like, is Elizabeth Warren? Well, she's still not at the well she's and she's not and she's and she i think she started out um decent but she's done nothing but steadily climb and she never like when um uh kamala Kamala. uh, yeah came out um I, i i i feel she was you know, very high in the polls. And then she just, she was up there for a while, but kind of, you know, I don't even think though people came for her. She just couldn't like sustain it on her own, which is kind of sad. Like it's been interesting to watch her. Like if you watch like the latest polls, like Kamala has dropped below like, uh, uh, Andrew Wang, uh, Yang. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, Wang. Wang. Uh, She dropped below Wang. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? (laughs) Is he cute? Uh, Andrew Yang. Uh, even like she was, Surprisingly Tony hasn't lower been than, below Wang in a long time. And some other people. Uh, Beto O'Rourke, below Julian Castro. Like he, I figured he would have been the, of the Texans running. He would mm-hmm. have been the standout. And I thought he would have like sustained a little bit more. Uh, so these guys are in like, yeah. sing, like 1% 
uh, in the polls, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but I see Elizabeth Warren. I actually I was listening. She'll to, be the nominee. I was listening. To I the, think so too. The uh, the New York Times podcast. Um, the Daily, and they were talking about the anatomy of Elizabeth Warren. <gasps> oh, uh, sexist. Uh, not, she no, has no, a vagina, okay? Get over it, New York Times. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren cam- uh, campaign rallies, and they were trying to, I think they were trying to build a narrative, like saying, oh, this is the Democratic equivalent of Trump's MAGA rallies. But it was an inter- it was the first time that I was, I was like, and I kind of brought a smile to my face, and I haven't, I haven't been on Team Warren, but it was like, it's not going to be Trump. I was like, she's going to get elected. She's going to be our next president, 2020. She's gonna win. I'm, 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 I think she's got a good shot. I, you know, because I feel some of these. I'm swing, not ready to say definitely, but it's like. But, but, but I do feel like some of these swing states. One of the reasons Trump won is blue collar workers were just dissatisfied with the status quo, and they thought, "Why the hell not?" And I do think if Bernie would have been the nominee, I don't know that Trump would be our president because I feel some people that thought, "Okay, I may as well give him a shot." economically may have been a little bit burnt out or perturbed on like grab women by the and things like that and so i think if you have a candidate that is legitimate on those issues but i don't think mostly just blue collar people got him into the white house no no but i think like in enough states like in wisconsin i think there were enough of those people to flip and I think his racist message appealed to a whole lot more people than... Oh, no, I agree. But I think, like, there were enough blue-collar factory workers in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin that if there was a candidate that on the Democrat side that they really felt would be their advocate, they may have flipped a couple of states. Oh, I think he brought people out... Trump brought people out of the woodwork on the racism, yes, and hatred, 100%. But I feel some of those people are in states that would have voted Trump anyways. I, I feel like any presidential election really is decided by a handful of states. And it's states that, you know, like Virginia, West Virginia, um, you know, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, things like that, states like that. Um, Which is crazy because that, I mean, I, I was telling you this like, I think Kendall the other day I'm like there were I think four million people or three and a half million people that voted for um, Hillary Clinton in 2016 all their votes none of them count in Texas right uh, because the electoral college system. right yeah yeah yet that three and a half four million people whatever that number is is more voters than like the the five least populated states mm-hmm. combined total voters yeah. not just Trump voters Trump and Clinton voters and they, those guys have electoral votes that count. And Our system like, is a little the, crazy, too, because I feel like the way the primary system's set up, all you, if you focus on the top three states, or the first three, it's almost like you're in. Like, if you don't win the first three states, you but, cannot be the nominee. But, but that's not even, well, from a primary standpoint, yeah, I yeah. guess that, yeah, that's how you, you gain your momentum. And it is. It's like, it's just, people think, oh, they didn't win Iowa? <laughs> no chance. Or, but, unless they play second. Now that said, I still am a, I, I am not ready to abolish the uh, electoral college system. I still think I, I'm still on board of that because I was. It, it changes the social construct. Like it changes it the constitution it, completely. Like the does. states lose their their say. And I, I get that Wyoming therefore has more say than all the three million or three and a half, four million people that voted for uh, Hillary right. Clinton. But I, that's the way the contract's written, so you've got to change the contract. But I, I'm not sure I'm ready to do that yet. Okay, Mr. Alito. All right. And so I'll, <laughs> the second thing I'll say is I just uh, was – and I'm not even – like I, I have not been on Team Warren, but I do think – I think she might be the You've never person. really liked her. No. But someone's got to counter okay. and say Kamala is the person because – uh, you have a friend, Tony, who is a friend of our podcast oh. via Twitter. Mm-hmm. I think she's never going to listen to this. Lori is never going to listen to this podcast Wait, again. Wait, what happened? Oh, she is. He's got a friend, Lori, who uh, follow, follows us on Twitter. Kamala, And is yeah. the uh, team Kamala. Oh, from day one. And I mean, if you start talking about like politics, I mean, she gets really pissed off. So, any good news about anybody. So she Lori, loves Kamala. Oh. Thomas, she loves don't it. hate me. I was there, but... Now Kendall's I'm a Warren been. person. <gasps> and Tony's always been well, a Warren. Well, here's why I'm a Warren person. Uh, I was on the fence, but so I got a foldable scooter to ride to work, you know, because my bike was kind of on the, the downhill. So the other day. I I'm, love how you described it as a foldable scooter, not just a scooter. 
<laughs> well, so I can just fold it and carry it into work. So the other day I'm scooting to work, waiting at a stoplight. On the other street, this guy's scooting to work, and he's like, "Hey, what's up?" I'm like, "Hey." And then I was he cute. Did you make a boyfriend? He was kind of cute. Scoot on him? And so of course I have no gaydar, but I mean, it, he was he was on a scooter. He, was he exactly. I'm like, okay, he's on a scooter. Might so well anyways, he's skates. like, "Hey, how's it going?" I was like, "Hey, how are you?" And then I'm waiting for a sec, and I look over, and on his like uh, scooter, he's got a Warren sticker, and then he's got like a rainbow sticker, and I'm like, oh, he is cute. And then, of course, the light turns green. I'm like, well, there Gone goes my forever. husband. Mm-hmm. Tony, jeez. <laughs> uh, always a gunkle, never a dad. So. But I'll tell you what, I had to go a different way that day because the train was had me stuck, so I'm going to start going that way to work every day. Uh, <laughs> So, so <laughs> mama didn't raise no fool because of the train. Because you want to be on a train. So, is Elizabeth Warren going to be running against Donald Trump now that there are impeachment proceedings? What's the yes? Um, I think so. I think it's just like Clinton. You know, like we're so close. You know, I mean, really, when Clinton was, the Democrats wanted him impeached so that Al Gore could be in there and have a few months track record of he's doing the job. And Republicans are like, nope, leave him in there. Then we can paint this as what a shit show the presidency is. Let's get a Republican in there. I'm actually I, scared, though, what is Trump's going to do to try to stay in office. I mean, Clinton bombed Iraq. to. And I don't think that's... You don't think... He did that because of that. You think it was convenient? I don't think so. I remember listening to the radio when it was like I was driving from College Station to San Antonio. And I was like, this guy just started a freaking war so he wouldn't be impeached. And I have no idea what Donald Trump will do. Like he's desperate and oh, yeah. clueless. And I mean, there has there has been chatter like since his, he's been president that nothing makes you more reelectable than a war. Yeah, and that's all his goal is. So that's uh, that's scary. <sighs> well, he loves being the first, so maybe he'll he's wanting to be the first removed from office. And he I, loves a scandal. He can say he doesn't. He doesn't. He loves so I make don't know. Spot I mean, people, history. there are some chatter that he might resign. I'm like, this guy's. No, he on. is. Are you kidding me? The no, lesson he learned, will go down fighting. The, the information will only get worse, though. Giuliani, mm, he's he squirming he's right now. Giuliani thinks he's a hero. He's yelling No, he's lying. He's like, he I'm doesn't a hero. believe that. He's trying to change the conversation. You hear that? What? Wait, what was that? Those are voices talking. That's the Russians. They were invading my, they were hacking my computer. <laughs> uh, so you, um, you think it'll just get worse, Kendall? Oh, yeah. I think more and more will come out. Every day. I do, you know, you can't, I mean, I feel Trump is, pro, like, in business dealings, everything, he's just sleazy and not above board. And I think you just can't contain all that. Like, any any person in that much of a public eye can't. I think there's this and other issues. There's just going to continue to be stuff. I just don't know. I mean, for all of Clinton's falls, fall, faults, he knew how to maneuver like politically despite him no i disagree but i'm gonna say despite his own tripping over his dick to like for women like i I think he knew how to play a political game to get people on his side i don't think trump has that like his well trump might have that political astuteness his i don't think so i don't think his team does like he's gonna around him i think clinton like had a very innate political ability I think Trump has done that by bullying. I don't think he's very suave and smooth. And I, I, I don't know that he has a lot of allies. I don't know. But, but a lot of the mess Clinton had to clean up politically and show his, his great fault. political chops, almost all of it was his, his own mistakes. Yeah. Right. Which so, is the same for Trump. But I don't think... But I mean, uh, Clinton's but, charismatic where Trump's like... And, and I think, I know, though, Trump. but I think Clinton had some people, some good allies, to your point, Tony, that could help him stay out of trouble. They were on message. Like, the Trump folks are all just trying to curry favor with Trump, so they're not looking out to be like, what's our cohesive message and talking yeah. to people? And I feel like anybody in the Trump administration, all they do is put out fires. Yeah. Yeah, which you know, is it's, because Trump wants to rule the narrative, and so it's like, well, he says that you're, you're, you thought you had an aligned message on what you're going to tell the public and reporters and whatnot, yeah. and Trump, 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 trumps that. So I'm not like Trump, ex- Trump, Trump, Trump yeah, trumps it. I'm not excited about uh, like, sure, f- personally, do I want Trump to be president? No, but am I excited about this long, elongated process that's about to uh, play out? Uh, him being impeached. Have you ever and, imagined what Trump would look like naked? No. Ew. Just because no. I said elongated, that's oh, what you're like, oh, gross. Well, 
better than Bernie. <laughs> oh, uh, God, Do no. you have a crush on him, though? No, Trump? No. I just feel like you have a big, shining white ass. Like, uh, very yeah. large. I bet it's flat and flubby. Ew, I don't want to talk about this. Stormy? About Let's it. change the Why subject. Why are you doing this? We, we all of a sudden, we just Let's... got a sponsor, and now you're just like, all of a sudden, all the sponsors. Our sponsor's are... not sponsoring till next week, <laughs> right. so thank God. <laughs> oh, Money well man. spent. Jeez. Oh, here Any we go. Kowtowing to the sponsors. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, already. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so anything else happened this week, Tony? Good week, busy. You're a busy man. This uh, busy yeah, yeah. Actually, so, I mean, we are talking about National Coming Out Day. I do have two stories this week about why coming out's important. So we can either talk about them now or we can talk about them We later. will get to that. Yeah. yeah. Let's, but, we'll, yeah. Hold on. And so what about you, Kendall? How's the engagement planning going? Good. We're still still telling people. We're still new. So the um, episode where I talked about my engagement actually comes out tomorrow because the way we tape this. Right. So Sunday. our Sunday, I should say. Yeah. So Sunday, we had not that Ben's parents listened to the podcast, but we have to tell them Sunday when we meet because okay. they had to cancel coming over last Sunday. So Sunday, we'll have the whole. Guess what, mom? Guess what, dad? What if what you're if, getting another son? What, what if, if they the, say no? What if the mom says? What if Ben's mom says? Yeah, we already know. We heard the podcast on the way here. We'll be impressed, and yep. we'll ask if they want to sponsor. <laughs> do they want to sponsor? <laughs> they have a like, oh, do you want to sponsor us? <laughs> And also, please stop listening, um, a, Ben's mom and dad, because who knows what I say. They have this. a wide reach. So. Well, that's actually what my like friend called talking to me. He's like, it was fisting on the pool table. He's like, wow, why were why do y'all feel comfortable talking about that if you're trying to get this to a wide audience? Why not? And I was question. like, and he, he wasn't like from a, you shouldn't. He's like, I'm just wondering, like yeah. why, you know, yeah. So. yeah. Because there's an audience for people that don't that aren't offended by that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so might as well talk, take it, it out of the bars yeah. into the streets. In my week, you know, I said, I, I canceled, the streets. I, I, uh, I revised the, um, the syllabus for my class and we're just talking about me being gay the whole rest of the semester. So thank uh, you, Kendall. Thank God. <laughs> it's an easy A. Cause like, I don't know anything about business, but <laughs> right. But I can certainly talk about me being gay. I know pronouns. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, so speaking of being gay, well, let's talk about our 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 story of how we came to t- tell ourselves and, and those we love and our friends with um, how we how we became how we got to our journey. So, before we do that, though, before we do that, let's uh, let's hear a little word from our sponsors, Economy Works. Are you ready, Economy Works? Oh, I'm ready. Here we go. All right. Did you know the unemployment rate is below four percent in the U.S. If you are trying to hire someone, then you probably already know that because you are having trouble finding quality candidates. Economy Works is here to help. Don't have time, energy, or the resources to hire? Economy Works is ready to help you write job descriptions, find candidates, review resumes, and phone screen candidates. Let the Economy Works Talent Network help you do more with less. Economy Works. When we work, the the economy economy works. works. (laughs) Woohoo! So find out more at economyworks.com. All right, so... National Coming Out Day is this week, October the 11th. And, you know, there are a lot of events to talk about this week. Uh, the first AIDS quilt, uh, a commemoration of um, a, a big LGBT march in Washington in the 80s, um, Matthew Shepard's uh, murder. Uh, and those are all things that, that are important to talk about. But I think that, you know, I, I, this all boils down to, I think, just this aspect of being visible and making sure people are aware of who you are as an LGBT person or an ally uh, and, and kind of the journey you got there. So I, I think the more we're out, the more um, awareness we build for the community and, and, and the more people can be sensitive to the issues that we're facing. Um, and this uh, National Coming Out Day, so this is what it boils down to, uh, started way back, way, way, way back in the 80s. Do you guys remember the 80s? No. Loved them. Um, Spencer was like, I was not even I born love the 80s. in the 80s. An 80s child. So I'm barely born. You're barely born. You're born again. All right. Uh, so, yeah, back in, in 1988, it was the first uh, National Coming Out Day. Before we, I, kind of, we dig in there, though, did you know that one out of every two Americans has someone close to them who is gay or lesbian? That's, a, I think, surprising st- statistic. 
As I think about it, as I reflect on that one, one. But did one you know for trans people, it's like one in eleven? Yeah, one in one in ten. Yeah, ten, yeah, one yeah, ten yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, uh, it's it's kind of. Those numbers are like interesting, and I think again it speaks to the importance of us. You said fifty percent, or say it again. One yeah. one out of every two Americans yeah. is someone close to them. So, if you don't know somebody gay, boo you gay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got news for you, boo. To Listen people. to our podcast. Wait, what? And come out. People are gonna be like, "Who do I know this gay? Who do I know this gay?" <laughs> oh my god, it's me. <laughs> you know, I, honestly, I used to do that. I'm like one out because it was this, this statistic <laughs> as a kid it was like one out of ten. I was like, "Well, it's not me, so it's got to be someone else." Who is that other person? Right. Then you always pointed to. It made one. math traumatic. Yeah. That's why I'm not a math person. Uh, and, and you know, even though with those statistics that we talked about, either you know someone or you are gay. Uh, not until 2015 could LGBT people get married legally across the United States. Yep. And today, we can still be fired from our jobs because we're gay. Yep. Transgender, lesbian, yeah. like, it's cool. My friend Kelly, like, I feel some people just are so, like, Kelly, who you met last week, we were talking about that, and she goes, no, they can't. And I'm like, in your world, because you've always worked for big corporations, but yeah, you know, like, they have policies against it, but legally, they can. Yeah, if they wanted to. Texas, yep. is a, uh, for example, is a right-to-work state, so you can be fired for any reason, yep. and unless it's a protected class. And so uh, you can definitely be fired for being, for being LGBT. And any executive order that a president says you can't can be overturned by the next president. Yep. This is why it's important to be registered to vote, even for House members because uh, and sen- in your senators, because the House passed uh, an ordinance of uh, legislation earlier this year to uh, grant protections to LGBT persons in employment, and the Senate has yet to pick has yet to pick that up. And the president, who knows if he'll sign it if it did get passed by the Senate? So of course he wouldn't. Um, so that's why it makes coming out, as, as the HRC president, Chad, or former HRC president, Chad Griffin, said, H- coming out is one of the most courageous acts any LGBTQ person makes. And on, nas- on this National Coming Out Day, uh, that courage remains in- essential to our continued progress toward full equality. So the more visible we are, the more our friends and family see kind of who we are, what we represent, the type of people we are, and that we're not this boogeyman that a lot of the conservative folks or uninformed people would try to make uh, us out to be. And you know, then you know, we, we, we stand to, to be better represented in, in the community. So this National Coming Out Day kind of was, you know, born out of that whole idea back in 19, 1988. The idea uh, for the day was a culmination of four months of momentum where more than 100 activists were gathered in Manassas, Virginia. Pronounced Man- manasses. Manasses. Ooh, wait, what? Mm-hmm. You loved to say that when we lived in Virginia. I was like, where are we going? Did you want to live there? We're going to Manasses today. And there's wine. Yeah. We're going to go to a vineyard. And where? Manasses is down south. Manasses. Uh, which is outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, according to the HRC... Does Martha live there? Uh, she lives there. <laughs> she lives wo- in Womasses. Womasses. <laughs> she lives in wo- vaginas. I don't know. Uh, it was conceived by psychologist Richard I- Eicher- Iger. I should know this. Eicher- E-I-C-H-E-R-G. Anyone want to give us... E-I-C-H-E-R-G. Iker. Iker. I'm smart. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> An activist, Gene, we'll phonetically Gene call it out for him next time. On October 11th, 1988, the meeting followed the second march on Washington for lesbian and gay rights on October 11th, 1987, in which a half a million people participated. And it was a half a million. That means at least 250,000 of them were gay. There you go. They were all. Or gay. they were all gay. <laughs> Just kidding. See, this is where the math gets hard. <laughs> Uh, they Don't participated in that march in 1987, and that was the first time the AIDS quilt was displayed. So at that same march, so it was a big event in which, you, again, reasons why back, like we talked about last week in 1994, they came up with this idea of celebrating October as National LGBT History Month, not to be confused, Kendall, with National Pride Month or, or Pride Month, because that's a different month. Uh, my jogging memory. Uh, he knows. He was very confused. Like, wait, wait, this is a month. This is he again, was this not LGBT History week. Month. Well, there's, did y'all wake me up? When you and there's me? no public record you? of it. So, right. No. We edited record. that part yeah. out. Uh, but yeah, so so it was a big big event in '87, and then in 1988, again, the the idea was born to have this national coming out day. Um, just a little bit about coming out, right? So the Na- the American Psychological Association said positive feelings about one's sexual orientation foster greater well-being and mental health. They define coming out as self-awareness of same-sex attractions, the telling of one 
uh, or a few people about these attractions and wide de widespread disclosure of same-sex attractions and identification with lesbian, gay, and bisexual community. I guess now we'd add tra transgender. Um, uh, they note that there, are, or at least the HRC notes, there's three stages of coming out. It's one first opening up to oneself, then coming out, and then living openly. Um, and we talked about with, with Tammy in the quiz show last week, uh, where, you know, that, that is part of it. Like, you're constantly coming out. You know, she talked about it as a business owner. Yeah. You have to come out, too, to, like, am I going to talk about with, with my clients about my same-sex partner and like, those sorts yeah. of things. And so, um, yeah, it, it, it's important that we're, we're out and visible. So wanted to spend the balance of this episode. Rather than us each going into our own historical topic, we'll resume that next week, so worry not. Let's go into our own journeys of, of, of how we came out. So, Kendall, the first episode I didn't need to take notes on. Kendall, you want to? Oh, am I starting for this? No, no, start? it's oh not. Oh my god! Well, my journey starts now because I'm just now officially coming out. Oh yeah! Okay, good just for like you. your engagement. Yeah, Kendall, good Kendall's for using you. the podcast to do everything. Major Get life engaged. moments. First, <laughs> I got engaged to a man, then good I came out. So when did I come out? Oh my god, that's a long story. Well, I felt like everyone knew. First of all, did y'all think people knew the entire time? Probably, Thomas, you didn't know. I didn't. You didn't think. Uh, I, I didn't. No, I didn't. See, I, I just assumed everybody knew. Tony? Oh, everybody knew from the time I was, yeah. Spencer, you said everyone. So I was a gay little pre preacher's kid, trying to remain in the closet, although I was shy. Um, like, tra tried to be basically wallpaper, because I was such in fear yeah. of coming out of the closet. And I thought if I came out that my dad would lose his job, my we would be banished from the him having a church ever again. Um, I would be like even more the black sheep of the family. So it took a long time for me to be even consider the fact of coming out. Yeah. And this is I spent most of my life in the dirty, dirty south. So at 15, I told my best friend, Laurel, I called, and I was so sad. I was so stressed about it, and I just, I, it was like, I have to tell somebody. And did you just feel like, I'm mentally a wreck, I've got to tell somebody? Is that why you did it? Or were you, like, what, what, what was your, like, I need to tell somebody? Why did you need to tell somebody? First, I felt, and this is very important, I knew that I would be able to tell her, and she wouldn't like shun me she wouldn't judge me so it really helps not everybody has oh some, yeah right I, yeah. somebody to tell but i finally got to the point where i was like okay i have to tell somebody and i know laurel will not judge me and i'll mm -hmm. only tell her and maybe yeah. it's the only person i'll ever tell in my life so i called her and told her did she say yeah i knew she said, oh, honey, it's okay. But I told her I was bisexual like many people do, <laughs> yeah. especially back then. It was like, oh my God. in your head, you're like, I know I'm gay, but how about we baby step? My friend John, queeniest person ever, bisexual, because he told people like in college, so I have to tell you, I'm bisexual. And he's never actually been like, bah. I mean, he's married with a kid. And, and you were like, gay. Yes, everybody's like, yeah, of course. We knew like. Anyways, go ahead. So, like, bisexual cologne? No, that's unisex, honey. <laughs> um, you and I. <laughs> so, for a week, I was bisexual. But it felt then, so good just to tell her. Yeah. And she was like, are you going to tell your dad? I was like, nope. Not going to happen. So, I didn't tell my... I told her at 15, I didn't tell my dad until 17. But at 16, I got a job. And I felt on my second job, no third job... Oh my god! I had so many jobs as a teenager, Kendall, just like I do as an adult. Yeah, I was gonna say you've had tons of jobs as a since whole since person. Started. Yeah, it was my third job, and I was only seventeen. I feel like our first twelve episodes, every episode, you're like, well, "How's your new job? This, like, Which one?" No, but you're like, "Oh, when I was like a paramedic. Oh, when I was like a plumber buyer." I'm like, "What the fuck, Abby? Yeah, a dominatrix." <laughs> 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 um. So on my third job at seventeen, there was a co-worker and i was like okay she seems cool with the gays i'll tell her and then i told her and of course it was like i'm all nervous about it and i came out as gay to her not bisexual and she said oh good i love gay people <laughs> <laughs> which in 1998 is like or 1999 it's like oh god thank you because you never know with these people yeah 
And this is in what, Alexandria? This is Alexandria, Louisiana, yeah. small little town. And then we go on a missions trip. So we used to do these like international missions trips when I was younger. Haiti, Honduras, Peru. And the first one we went to was Haiti. And there's this girl on the trip. Surprise, Karen. You're a part of my going coming out story if you ever listen. Uh, she, she's our number one fan. My dad wanted to, me to date her so badly. Uh. So he was trying to set us up. I'm this little formerly bisexual gay boy. And did not want it to happen. So we're on the, the Haiti trip at this like nice dinner. And Dad thinks he's really going to set me up with uh, Karen at so this time. So it's like, time. you sit next to Karen. Yes. And Laura was there at the table who I came out to. So she saw this coming. And she's like, popcorn, please. Oh, she <laughs> loved it. And Karen said, I don't think Kendall, just out of the blue, which shocked me. I don't think Kendall likes girls. <gasps> She said that publicly to the yes. dinner table? Yes. On a mission trip? Yes. And I said, no, just not redheaded ones. Like in a mean way or just funny? Well, she, to her it might have been funny, but to me she it was said, like. Yeah, like why say that? You don't realize what you're, you know, yeah. jeopardizing here. She said it in here. front of your dad, too. Yeah. So I said, just not redheaded ones, because she was redheaded. And got in so much trouble. Dad was so mad. Told me later that you're going to ruin your chances with her. You know, the rest of the time in Haiti. So we get back to the U.S. and we're Do you think it flagged your dad to be like, is he? Yes. I, I knew when he was, because he was trying to set me up. I was 17. The only other date I had gone on with a girl was one that he basically said, you have to go on a date with her. So I was like, I'll go on a date. This is when I was 15. And you can get your driver. driver's license. Who, who is she? She may be listening. We want to give her a shout out. Oh, I don't even remember her name. Oh, come on. Daisy. No, I don't remember her name. I think it starts with an A. Crystal. I blocked it out. Yeah. Amanda, Mandy, Crystal. Those are all your fantasies that you're spitting out on the mic. <laughs> no, I don't know any of those anyway. girls. Those are, sen, those are sen, sen Law folks. You're talking about Misty and Crystal? Yeah, Misty, Crystal. Tammy. Tammy. Well, no. <laughs> well, Tammy is from Mississippi. <laughs> okay, well, let me tell my coming out story, Thank please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we're there at dinner and my dad is shocked and pissed. And then we get back to the U S and we're looking at pictures and I knew, because I feel like when you're constantly like avoiding people asking you if you're gay, you can kind of sense it when they're about to ask. And I'm like, he's about to ask me if I'm gay. He's about to ask me because he's looking at pictures and like me and Karen are the pictures and all that. And you were posing like a true woman. Probably had my ass showing only. (laughs) And so did he duck face? So he said, so Karen seems to like you. You don't seem to like her. And he looked up in the pictures. Are you gay? <laughs> I'm 17 at this point. And in my head, I just say, fuck it. And no just... turn it back. I say, yes. He said, what? I said, I'm gay. And then the phone rang. And he answered the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing there like, oh, God. <sighs> yeah. Did you really have to answer the phone right now? And I cannot move frozen. Like, did that really just happen? And it's yeah. my mom. And he's like, okay, dinner's at what time? Okay, okay, cat. That sounds good. Okay. I'm like, get off the phone. It's making it worse, you being on the phone. So he hangs up the phone. He was very sweet about it. And I never, I always thought if I came out of the closet, it would really, I knew my parents would have a hard time with it, but it wasn't because they would love me less. They just wouldn't understand it. Mm-hmm. Because in the sense of coming out, sometimes you have to be more mature than your family members and parents because yeah. it's your stuff you've been dealing with and yeah. then you just drop it on them. And that's the thing. You've been struggling with it for your whole life or ever since you've hit puberty or whatever, and they're finding out about it now. Yeah. And even if they kind of suspect, they're facing the reality now where you're mentally facing the reality for however long. You know, I always say they have to. parents have to come out Right, the, clo- it, the day you come out of the closet, that's when they is start. when their yeah, yeah, coming yeah, yeah. out yeah. journey begins. Is coming exactly. out and as they have a process because, in general, even if your dad wasn't a preacher, small town Louisiana, they're going to lose friends or they're going to be looked at differently, especially if they are a preacher. It's like wow, you know. I mean, yeah. So go ahead. Well, with a lot of parents, they have their own shame. Yeah, they're in, embarrassed to say. You know, if someone says, how's little Mikey? Yeah. And little Mikey is in a polyamorous relationship 
four dudes. <laughs> <laughs> how do you Mike tell? Mike great. <laughs> how do you do that to mom? You know, how do you explain that to your your own mom? Yeah. Well, little Mikey is good. He's with uh, Daryl and Steve and Chester and roommates. <laughs> He's but the they're thirty eight. Right. He has a lot of roommates. <laughs> He's basically my big brother. So they have to come, you know, deal with their own shame as gay parents because parents in their mind have a vision for their kid when they're mm-hmm. born of that kid is going to make me so proud and it's going to be a reflection of me and my parenting and it's going to make me look. Yep. Let's be honest, it's instinctive for a lot of parents to think this. Right. Going to make me look good and they're going to give me grandchildren. It's a lot about me, me, me. So when you come out and you say, guess what, I'm gay, and all these things go through their mind like, how dare you ruin the vision I had for you? Yeah. <laughs> and I think some parents think, you know, being gay is a tough life and I don't want that for my kid. You know, like, I, I don't want them right. to face any more struggles than they have like, to. Like, haven't you thought of another way? Yeah. So, my dad was very sweet, but he convinced me, uh, this is the sad part to me at the time, is that when I was younger, dad told me and my sister, there's only two things I wish for my kids, is that they marry a Christian person. <laughs> First of all, I, when he told me this at like six, I'm like, well, I can never get married without lying, so yeah. that's out. And then he said, and they're good, that they're good Christian people. And I never considered myself a Christian, never believed it. It was all such a farce to me. So I'm like, yeah. well, there that goes because I'm not even a Christian. So for him to say the most important thing for my kids is that they marry a Christian person, he had gone from that and you're a virgin until marriage and all that to, well, you just need to try it. <laughs> you know, it was almost like this yeah. desperate, what do you mean you're gay? You, you sure just you just need to, yeah, woman. like maybe you need to be. Maybe you just need to experiment or something like that, which was so shocking to me because it yeah. went against 17 years of the way I was taught. Yeah. It's like, let me take you to... But in his defense, he was like, it's a hard road you're going to go down. Are you sure this is... Yeah. In his thinking, what you want to do. Yeah. So right when I was at the point of ready to come out, able to tell my dad, um, he kind of convinced me that it was possible to be straight. So I went back in the closet. And then by this time, when I was back in the closet, I was about to graduate high school and go to college for the first time. And we went on another missionary's trip to Honduras and I passed out and had a seizure. And it was this, it wasn't like a seizure to where you forget, you like you black out and don't know what it is. It was to where I fainted first hit the ground and then was awake but I was like shaking and control my couldn't control my body came back to the US and lost a whole bunch of weight I mean I was already thin back then and I just looked like a skeleton what was the cause of your Caesar stress or well we'll get to that okay so I went to a bunch of specialists I kept having these seizures kept losing weight um, was in the hospital for five days had saw all these specialists no one knew what the deal was and then dad, me, dad took me to a specialist in, oh, you know what's ironic? Is you know who went with me on the four-hour drive to the specialist to figure out why my problems were? Jesus. Karen! Oh, my gosh. Dad found a way to invite her. Karen. So we, we go, and the, the doctor walks in to the room to figure out what's wrong with this little boy because he keeps falling out and having seizures. Um, and the doctor is one of those weird things to where I knew what he was getting at as soon as he opened his mouth. He said, so your dad's a preacher, huh? And he looked at me. I said, yeah. He said, that's got to be stressful, isn't it? And I was like, no, I'm pretty used to it. He said, okay. That's it. That's an entire consultation. He walked outside. I found out when I left um, and told my parents, your son's gay and the stress of being a gay kid in Louisiana, in, a pre- in this time, as a preacher's kid, is causing him so much stress that his body is turning against How him. How could he tell you were gay? Just by the way, you were side saddling on the the checkout table. Probably, or? I mean, yeah. I probably was prepared for the rectal exam when he walked in. <laughs> Bent like, over the table. Like, ooh, he's cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought I was gonna get fingered. Um, we, we've since seen them at the gay bars here in Houston, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I Ooh. recognize that. Figure. Ooh, <laughs> a doctor? What is he cute? So my parents told me, and I said, "Has it come to this? Really? Like I'm in the hospital and having to see yeah. specialists because I'm so stressed." I said, "I'm not doing it anymore. 
because it's like a it's messing with my health. Yeah. So I'm gonna officially be out. And that's when the whole journey of actually like accepting, even though I came out at 15 and started telling more and more people, and I was out in my senior year and told my dad. It wasn't until I got diagnosed. I call it being diagnosed with the gay. I'm like, you what are you, you medical literally diagnosis? Were, literally, it was. It went from the psych, uh, Journal of Psychology <laughs> to Journal <laughs> right. of Medicine. <laughs> to my diary. When you came out to your friends and stuff, or I mean, aside from your best friend, were, the, uh, were they accepting at school? Like, what was the, the take there? You know what? They were far more accepting once they came out of the closet than when I was in it. Because it takes a lot of the poison. Unfortunately, insecure kids and insecure people in general, but we're talking about kids in high school, will find what you feel like is your biggest weakness and what you're most insecure about mm. and exploit it and make you feel worse so that they don't feel yeah, the focus is on bad about them. themselves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So once I completely took that out of their arsenal, it was kind of like, oh, they respected me more. But I also wasn't... I didn't make it so easy to be picked on because I did. People did tell me I was funny, and people did. Um, they meant you were gay. You're like, like, like my exactly. mom calls gay people. Oh, he's funny. My grandma says calls it peculiar. <laughs> my, isn't he peculiar? <laughs> like, no, and the way first. she drags it out, you know. That's, that's my. That's how my mom. My mom's always. Oh, he's funny. She doesn't say it anymore. She used Achy. to. Like, and then the flip of the, the wrist. hand wave. Like, he's, I think he's funny. Blessed mom. So, uh, so it, you were out, and then you've kind of been out since then. Like, I mean, never for twenty been years. In the yeah. Closet. No, I was like, Ugh, who knows how far? I mean, my insurance is going to start. I'm going to lose my. Any any thoughts? Like react? Like any in terms of your journey since then? Like, has it been a bumpy road? Like, have you encountered? things that you're like maybe uh it allowed me to completely have a flip of why do i have to be gay i never want to leave my house this sucks why did it have to happen why did it have to be that 50 percent um to seeing it as a blessing or a good thing to where i'm so glad i was born gay or been gay my entire life because it makes me understand other people's um similar issues whether it be racism or transphobia or whatever, I feel like, oh, I know what it's like to be on the outside looking in. Yeah. Same. I, I, I'm, I hated being gay for so long, but now that I'm like out and stuff, I love being gay because it's opened up my mind. You know, you're more open-minded, I think. Except and it, the and people the, I've met are just more diverse and colorful. And the gay sex. Oh, of course. So, uh, Tony, how did you, how, what's your story in terms of coming out? So mine is interesting. I have kind of two stories. I have where I was kind of outed and then like when I was in college to, to my family and then when I was like uh, actually came out myself. So, I mean, I'll preface this with everybody has always known I've been gay since birth. I mean, you know, it just I just was, you know, like everybody knew I couldn't hide it or whatever. So it was my senior year in college. You know, I still lived at home when I was in college. And I get home from school one day, and my mom's like, hey, one of our best family friends, Judy, she goes, hey, you need to run over to Judy's house and grab some stuff. And I was like, all right. So I go over there, and it was a farce. You know, Judy's like, hey, um, you know, everybody that knows you knows you're gay. And I'm like. She just randomly said that? Yeah, so my mom sent me over because what had happened was earlier that day, my mom and Judy were talking like they had known each other for years and years and years. And they were just talking about this and that, you know, Judy offhandedly said something, about, you know, like something about me being gay. And mom's like, what? And she's like, Wait, what do you mean? What? And she's like, gay. And she's like, oh, what do you mean? Like, of course, you know this. And my mom's like, well, she's like. Everybody knows. What are you talking about? And she goes, well, I guess I did, but I guess maybe I was in denial. I don't know. Like, do you think he is? She goes, of course he is. So anyways, um, she's like, look, like, everybody loves you. It's okay. Like, you know, she's like, you're awesome. Just everybody loves you. It's okay. Like, and everybody knows. Like, why, you know, why are you worried about it? I was like, okay. Was there anything that prompted that? Like, was it National Coming Out October 11th, 2001? No, literally, like, like, she was talking to my mom that day, and she made just some, like, they were rent, and she, slip of the tongue, like, said something about me being gay, and mom's like, what? Did it piss you off at the time? So, at the time, 
I had known, like, everybody knew I was gay. It's kind of one of those things, like, you know, but you don't want to admit it to yourself or you're in denial or whatever. So I will say this. I was, like, growing up, very happy kid. Just, I mean, you know, when I was in high school and stuff, I was struggling with the gay thing. But outwardly, I was very, like, you know, just happy, kind of, like, very social very funny life of the party type like what happened i was i was never and like everybody was just always like drawn to me i was very um i don't know just did you date girls oh no 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 kendall said he did not so no I, ne- never and i always, only the two dates i was forced to go. i always had the mindset like i was kind of like a very short skinny dorky kid but even when i was i always had the attitude this has ruined my life i'm never gonna bring a girl into yeah. this yeah that's how i was yeah so you didn't so, you didn't think cuz Kendall you you've said before like you thought you were like oh, I'm going to have to get married like that No, I said my options are get married and live a lie, which I'm not going to do or be in the closet forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. N- neither one of those options was live openly as a gay man. It took years for me to get to that point. And, yeah. And so Tony means small town similar to Okay, Kendall. yeah. So for me, small town, very bigoted family, you know, things like that and so and really, I got I got thinking about this about this episode. You know, in my small town, there were a handful of gay people, but they didn't have nor like they didn't date anybody. There was just a limited universe, and they were like, oh, you know, there's like you know Tom the gay guy, the town gay. Yeah, exactly. And so they had no life. I mean, they weren't fully accepted. Like even if they weren't hate crimed, it was just they were a little bit like kind of like the town weirdo, you know. And so I was like. In my mind, I'm like, I'm not going down that road. And so when this happened, I really, I was paranoid. I remember for a couple of weeks, every person I came in contact with, like people that I had seen every day at school, was like, does he know? Wait, like I'm Rolodexing, like what is every interaction I've had with this person? And it put me on guard. I was like, you cannot let your guard down for one second. Like every second of every day, your focus has to be, you cannot pick up the bread in a way that makes you gay. Yep. You can't, like, take a sip of coffee that makes you look right, gay. Right, because the way I hold the coffee yeah, mug might You make... have to focus on my voice has to be straight. I mean, everything. Is and that I... your straight voice? <laughs> yes. That's because it sounds like B. Arthur from Golden <laughs> Girls. You modeled your man voice on... <laughs> Thank you. Dorothy Zbornak from uh, Golden Girls. See, I, I just cannot be straight no matter what. So, and it really put me in kind of a bit of a funk for several years and um you know and then of course my first job out of college is working on the offshore rigs working in a conservative company like we talked about with tammy like that's another level of coming out even for so that was kind of my first story and and again for years after that and we talked about jim mcgreevy where i was like God, I was was such a mental struggle. I mean, every day, like, it was kind of like all I thought about, you know, because I'm in my early 20s, and, like, I moved to New Orleans, and everybody that I started with, like, all these young professionals, they're dating, they're either hooking up all the time, dating, whatever, me never, and so people are like, what's wrong with you? Like, you're, you know, like... Wait, question, so Judy gave you the opportunity to come out. She did, and But you just thought you were, like... No, I'm yeah. not ready. Oh, I mean, I was paranoid because I was like, holy fuck, everybody knows. And Thanks, she's like, Judy. Yeah, and she said, Tony, it doesn't matter. She go- And she, I remember she said, she goes, Tony, I've been in love a couple times in my life, and it is the most wonderful thing you'll ever experience. She goes, don't, don't ever, like, let that be taken from you. She's like, do not. She's like. But you had to admit it to her. But did, did, or no, did, did you, you? We're denying you it with her. I, I was, like, she was, I was just so. I don't know if I said two. I, I was just you like, were probably oh my not God. denying. And, you know, not I will say this. So my mom worked graveyard at the time, and so she went to work at like probably like nine nine thirty at night. I don't know what time that, but I remember like whenever I left her house, my mom didn't leave for work for like probably two hours. You can drive around my hometown in like ten minutes. I fucking drove. I I was just like I can't go home. I don't know what to do. I, Were like, you emotional when that? Like, did you cry? I mean, because I haven't known you to be. Like, I didn't cry. I'm not a crier, but I was saying. as emotionally stressed out as I've ever been, probably. Yeah. yeah. And I just remember like my whole world changed. And, and you didn't admit to her that you were you were gay. Oh no no! I mean yeah. I mean you were just you just wait. You did or you did? I don't know if I. I mean the understanding was yes, I'm gay. I mean she knows it. Everybody knows yeah. it. I mean I wasn't denying. Oh, you weren't it. denying it. Okay. No, I wasn't denying it. It was just like holy fuck. Everybody knows. 
And I just remember the next day when I went to school, it was like every interaction I had, I was like, oh, my God, you know. And I was just – I was panicked. And I'm like – I was truly in like a panic for quite a while. That's why I don't like when if you're at a – when people ask me, do you think they're gay? It always makes me uncomfortable to even contribute to that conversation because it's like it's not my story to tell. Yeah. I'm not going to out and somebody. And I remember like I watched a documentary about Magic Johnson and his son is oh, yeah. Mr. Flamer. And he said, my wife and I were like, we are never going to say anything to him until, like, we're going to provide yeah. a fostering environment. And we're going to, like, oh, like, just in general support gay people. But we're never going to indicate that we know he's gay until he's ready to come out. What, what does that look like, though? Because I, you know, uh, for for parents that are, may have gay kids, like, what would be the right fostering? Like, how does that, how does that I work? I think focus less on gender norms because so much of... If you tell them, put the pink one down and get a blue one. Blue's for boys. You know, that feeds into, yeah. well, you know what else is for boys? Only vaginas and women. And I don't think it takes a lot. I think it takes, like, you just don't say bad things when you see gay people and it's like, oh, my coworker Steve's gay. Like, I just think he's a great person, whatever. And I mean, flat out tell them. We do not judge people. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah, and if that if your gay kid says, like, oh, Susie's ugly because she has red hair, it's like, don't ever say that about Susie because right. she has red hair. I think it's important to call out all discrimination. I agree, yeah. So they know that it wouldn't be a big deal if I were gay, if I were to bring home someone from another race. Yep. Or any, I just It's being a good person. Yeah. yeah. So... so so my second, so that was, you know, so that was my first kind of coming out or so, when so I was outed. Question. So prior to that, because I, I know Kendall's story, like you had, you didn't hook up with anyone until you were Oh, out. unfortunately. Yeah. I wish I yeah. experimented with guys. I was 19. 19. Yeah. So nothing until you were out, out, right? Actually, you know so, what? If we're getting personal here. So after that, I was like, I will not live this life. I will not live a gay life. Okay. And so... Up until that point, I had always been like, I am never going to involve a woman in this because this is my own struggle, whatever. So talk to me about that, right? So you're like, I'm not going to live a gay life, but I'm also not going to involve a woman. So you were just going to live a like a asexual life? I guess, yeah. Life? I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I didn't really I mean, think I, about it long what, term. Uh, oddly, that's what you're living now because yeah. you don't have sex. Well, I but know, but yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's like, so I, don't, I didn't really have a strategy, but I was like, I just... As a person, I, I just feel I'm very caring for other people, and I could never look a girl in the face and be like, I'm going to put you through this. I just couldn't do it. Um, so after that happened, I was like, I'm not going to live this life. And so I thought, I am going to make it a purpose. In two months, I'm graduating college, starting a new life. I am going to make it a purpose to like find a girlfriend. And so I'm really going to solidify people are not, not going to know I'm gay. So, of course, there were a couple girls that, like, were actually into me in college, whatever. And so... Um, Did you get into them? Uh, he wanted them to be into him. Like, so, literally. No, no, they were. And, like... No, I, no I'm saying... Oh. Uh, like, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so, they had kind of put the moves on me a little bit. I'm like... And so, after that, I was like, okay, let's do this. And they're like, really? I'm like, okay. And so, this one girl... This was a scary situation for me. So this one girl, she was like into me and I'm like, okay. And I think she was kind of into me, but she kind of wanted a meal ticket. So we hooked up once and I did not use protection. So You got a pregnant? You have a kid? No. So demo I hook up with her one time and then, you know, that was it. Move on. Go to New Orleans. <sighs> About a year later, nine, 10, 11 months later, I get a call and she's like, hey, this is Mandy. And I'm like, Mandy who? And she's like, and I was like, hey. And she's like, so I had a kid and I think it's yours. Oh, and my God. And she goes, God. it was nine months after we had hooked up. The, and I'm like, okay. She goes, <laughs> and it was also scary because, so she goes, you know, the state of Montana is going to be contacting you for child support. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. And so literally... Chevron sent me a letter and said, uh, we got a letter from the state of Montana. You need to keep your affairs in order because our HR is not dealing with this. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I get this letter from state of Montana my, saying my you need to show up for a paternity now. test. And I'm like, okay. So I go take this paternity test. And of course, at that time, it takes like three weeks or something like DNA testing. How stressed were you in this whole thing? Oh, my God. On? I am like, oh, my. Mr. Oh. Engineer. Yes. I am like panicking. Small town Montana. And so literally, she goes, well, I'm going to send you some pictures of the baby. I was like, okay, whatever. And 
gosh. Yes. And, <laughs> oh my gosh. And here's one thing. So I literally take this paternity test, and they're like, "Well, the results take three weeks." And I'm like, "Okay." And shortly after that, I had like within a few days, I had gotten this, and she she went to a different university, and it was right near a Native Native American reservation. I open up this envelope, and there's like a dozen pictures, and this kid is 100% Native American, and this girl is pale-skinned, blonde-haired, and I thought... Oh, she wanted it to be you. And my thing was like, there is no way that's that kid is Native American. And like, I thought... But still, I'm in a fucking panic, and I'm like... And, and so, she, she oh, she quit school. She was like, I moved back in with my mom, and I thought... And the way the state of Montana works is the father needs a certain standard of living. So, say like it's the poverty line, 20 grand a year. Anything above that, so you are responsible for child support no matter what. If you make five bucks an hour, you're responsible for child support. But once you make over 20 grand a year, everything above 20 grand a year, if that lady says, I need this to provide for my kid, I can't work, I need to be a stay at home mom, she's entitled to it. And I'm like, here goes my <laughs> Luckily, it was not my kid. You I wonder how many guys got those letters. <sighs> you only had sex with her once? Yes. And why did you decide? Because, you, Tony, you seem like a very uh, – you manage your risks. So the first time you're ever going to have sex with a woman – No, no, it wasn't the first a, time. Oh. So uh, it was first time with her. So after this conversation with Judy, I was like, you know, these couple girls that are, like, interested in me, I'm doing it. I was like, I, I am going to prove to the world. I was, like, on a mission to prove to the world that I was, like, not gay. Yeah. And so, um, okay, so it wasn't the first. Oh, it was like you, the no, so it was like, right? yeah, but I will say, I honestly think that was that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because I was like, okay, here are the quant- consequences of going that direction. And so I quickly reverted back into leave, lead your like cat lady life where you're not going to be out, but you're not going to involve some other girl into this whole mess. Yeah. Side note. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so my actual coming out story is, um, so I'd moved to Houston, still living my, you know, just not just my bachelor life, not doing How old? anything. Um, what's that? How old? Probably about 28. So my friend Jackie, who lived in Denver, she goes, hey, come to Houston for the weekend. Let's hang out. I'm like, great. And we all had a bunch of mutual friends here. All, you know, we're all single, all late 20s. So I'm like, great. Party weekend. She goes, my friend Tyler's coming down with me. I'm like, great. She goes, he's super fun. So she comes down with her friend Tyler, and we're all hanging out for the weekend. And he is awesome. He's super fun. Everybody loves him. Great guy. Super cute. And he's gay. So we're all hanging out, having a great time. And it wasn't like, I mean, she wasn't trying to set us up. And he, like, he wasn't coming down here to meet anybody. It was just like... He was like BFFs with Jackie. I was her BFF here. We're all hanging out. So we hang out all day at this barbecue. We're drinking. Then we go out at night to the straight bar. We're drinking, whatever. And we're like, okay, let's go to breakfast. 2 a.m. Let's go to Denny's. So I drive him to Denny's. And everybody's, you know, taking separate cars. On purpose? Like, did you, were you feeling something? Uh, I think a little bit. I think he was more than I was. I think he was a little, I think the straight people and he were a little more calculating than I was. So we pull up to Denny's two in the morning and he kind of goes in for a kiss. And it was a very just innocent like, hey, we've been hanging out all day together. You're really cool. There's a good vibe here. Like, you know, as any normal gay person would. And so I was like, what in the fuck are you doing? And I was like, wait, what? No. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, you're outing me. Of course, I can't do this. What? This is freaking me out. In his mind, the initial was like, oh, God, you're not into me? I was getting a vibe that you were. But quickly, after a couple seconds, he's like, wait, what? Like, you really don't want this? And I'm like, no. And he's like, okay. And we're like, let's just go to breakfast. So we go into breakfast. <laughs> and, and Yeah. And so I remember thinking. And so the next day, I was like, never again am I going to be in a situation where a really awesome, really nice really fun, really cute guy is into me and throwing himself at me. And the wall is closet. I mean, it's one thing if like, oh, we're coworkers. I don't know about this. But I was like, done. I'm never going through that again. 
Yeah, you tell us every podcast episode. I ran across a cute guy at the coffee shop at the stoplight, and I didn't say Well, anything. I'm not going to go out and talk to them, but if they're throwing them so... But it's not because I'm closeted. In front of your I'm scooter. like, oh, I'm 40. I'm like in my cat lady lifestyle. <laughs> so after that, and you know, for me, it was always like, everybody knows I'm gay. What the, why are you hiding it? What's the big deal here, you know? But it just, and it was, it was kind of a weird wall between me and, like Kelly said, she goes, yeah, when Tony's like, yeah, I'm gay, it's like, uh, okay. You know, like, yeah. I mean, and so pretty much everybody I told was like that. They're like, okay. But it's also, I felt like I needed to just say it to clear the air, you know? So, well, because you get to a point where you feel stupid. Like, I know people I know, and know, I was like, but... this is so dumb. Like, everybody knows. Like, you're, you're 28 years old and you've never had a girlfriend, and it's not like you're the ugliest person or the biggest asshole or something. It's like... You've never had a girlfriend, and you're 28. Everybody knows. So the friends you told, like, what, who's the first friend, or who's the first person you, when you finally you're like, I'm gonna be out, like, wow. So the first person I told was um, Kelly and I's really good friend Mitzi, and she's like, okay. I mean, again, it was like she was like, okay. She goes, well, you know, I mean, I suspected, but you know, I don't like to like, you know, insinuate about people, and so she was kind of awkward in. God, how do I say, yeah, I've known for 20 years. Like, what are you talking about? Um, and then my friend, I was like, my friend Aaron was like, she's like, okay. Like, kind of like, I don't know what to say about this because she didn't say this, but I was like, Aaron, I have to tell you something. She's like, okay. I was like, I'm gay. And she goes, okay. Was she upset or was it? No, she was just kind of like, kind of like Kendall being like, I have to tell you something. What is it? My shirt screen, it's like, yeah, I, I know your shirt screen. Like, what are you talking about? You see your big gay green shirt. Like, yeah, you know, can, exactly. we, can we order already? Like, yeah, uh, and margaritas? Because so, literally, we, like, Aaron and I, we used to, like, hang out on Friday and Saturday nights. We'd, like, you know, go get a couple drinks. And so we were driving from one bar to the next. I was like, I have to tell you something. She's like, what is it? And I'm like, I'm gay. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, well, I mean, I know everybody knows, but I was like, I just need to tell people. And she goes, okay. Like, I mean, it's like, okay, that was it. And literally, we were like, I was like, okay, so. And then we started talking about whatever else. Yeah. Was there any, like, uh, debrief afterward? I mean, later, they were like, oh, yeah, and we totally, like, started the phone chain where they were talking about it to other friends? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think everybody was just like, I mean, Finally. yeah. It's, yeah, it's like, yeah. I mean, I was 28. Yeah. It wasn't like I was 17 where, you know. No. Yeah. So that's my. Huh. Yeah, I. And you came out at 28, right? And Kendall, you at 15. 15 but to everybody, 17. I was 17, yeah. yeah. I came out in 2008 to everybody. Uh, so at that that would put me at 20. About my age, yeah. Yeah, 28. Yeah, yeah, so same. Um, and so, yeah, it was uh, an adventure. I didn't, I grew I mean, I didn't get bullied or anything like that. People, I don't think, presumed I was gay and uh, at least from what people tell me now, like, I never knew in high school. I mean, yeah, I got teased. But you're bi, so that... Yeah, I mean, I got teased as a kid, but I think that was every kid. Like, oh, you're gay. And I was like... But I did, as a kid, I would... I gravitated towards making friends. I mean, I had guy friends, I would, especially in middle school and high school, but in elementary school, like, I bonded with, like, girls more. I hung out with... I, and my dad was always like, oh, you know, why are you hanging out with girls all the time? Uh, so then I would go hang out with guy friends more, which I didn't have mm -hmm. a problem. It wasn't anything. We'd play basketball. I'd and then you'd be sports. like, oh, why are you hanging out with guys so much? <laughs> but it was never a, a thing. Uh, my, you know, you guys talk about like what you're, you told you, you mentioned what your dad said. My dad told me, he's like, and my dad is not a bad person, but he said this. I remember I was, because my sister was born. Uh, so I was probably five or six, but I still remember to this day. Uh, now a 40 year old man. Uh, that uh, he was like, just don't date a black woman, a black, well, he said a black person, or be gay. Really? Yeah. That's exactly are, what my grandma said. Yeah, so it's just really? like. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I've that, that. I think I've told and it on which, one of the shows. Which is like weird because my dad's not, my, my dad didn't raise me or my sister to be a racist or homophobe. So, but I was like, okay, like. So he was fine. He would. He didn't raise us to hate gay people or black people or anyone. He was just like, but don't bring that in my house, right? Oh yeah. Uh, but if I would have been racist to, or homophobic to someone, he would have been. He would have been upset with me, because uh, my mom had a cousin 
who was gay, but he was very off- offended by uh, my mom's gay cousin. And I remember my mom's gay cousin. I mean, I, I, I felt like I, I, even as a kid early on, and maybe because I was touched by a whatever uh, as a kid, uh, I think like I, I was always confused because because when you're when you're touched uh, when you're molested as a kid you are always kind of struggling with that and because it was someone of the same sex like I was always like that to me has been like the biggest thing in my in my throughout my life where well at least until I came out where it was like one of those things like you're always trying to hide that or reconcile that like what happened there yeah, yeah. what kind of experience and deal with that? why it happened yeah. and well it wasn't even why but it was just like how that affected me sexually I mean I feel like I am a I'm sorry mom I'm gonna have to tell mom not to listen to this episode uh, by the way mom says she loves the episode you guys are hilarious uh, she was thanks like, mom sometimes she's like I should probably shouldn't listen to all of the things you guys say but I love it um, but anyways uh, I feel like one that has contributed maybe to my me being hypersexual and two like just being uh, like confused as a kid like well do I like being with guys and so I always kind of played it back to well it was because I was molested uh, but I I mean now as an adult I was like well this is just it's not a unhealthy thing that I'm trying to hide it's just something that's an extension of my sexuality. But anyways, I struggled with that, but I didn't, I mean, I didn't identify as gay or bisexual as a, as a, as a, as a kid in middle school, high school, I played sports, I got, I hung out with, especially in high school, hung out with guys, I dated girls, um, I had a girlfriend in high school, lost my virginity in the front seat of a, my car. The front seat? Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I enjoyed sex with a woman, because I, I say this, because we had a conversation the other day, Kendall, with a, uh, um, a guy that we we know and we were talking about and I was like have you ever cuz the, the question with gay guys right are you a gold star or platinum gay and All right um, wait what is platinum you were not you were born by C- oh, C-section right, yeah. right so but I and I and I proudly I'm like I've had sex with women I've I have enjoyed that uh, but you know I say that to a bunch of gay men who've always been gay they're like ooh gross vagina disgusting and so um, I did yeah I don't understand that either what having sex with women or no the being like, disgusted by it i mean yeah yeah but again i'm not i so dated in high school a girl long t- well, for a year um and then in college i i fell in love with the girl like i we had this weird relationship but i was definitely in love and um while i didn't see myself getting married because i was i've never been a person of like i'm gonna get married and have kids even as a kid like i didn't see that but as I was becoming like into my adulthood, early adulthood in my 20s, I started messing around with men, but I was just like, oh, this is just one off. It was like the whole oh, thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, but he did it to me and Only I- Only one of y'all got off. Yeah, well, yeah, I was like, and I'm the one who, like, it was not me that was um, penetrated or whatever. Like, oh, I yeah, didn't yeah. do the oral, like I was the recipient. I'm not like, gay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was just yeah. like- I didn't then, wear the pinky ring. And then over time, it just like you just I was always justifying. Well, I'm but I'm still not gay because I like I like to date women. And so that's that was kind of what permeated like my like my thought process. But I'd hooked up with plenty of guys more than I more guys. I've hooked up with more guys than women, but uh, in, in inappropriate and unhealthy ways. But like, so this is all before you came out. All before I came out, and similar to you, Tony, like, uh, you know, you well, not similar to you, because you talked about like hanging out with your your straight friends, but there was the one gay friend, and I always kind of gravitated to that gay friend. Uh, and then I would always like manage to seal the deal. Up with him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unlike like, unlike you who were like, no, I'm not. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get on. Because again, I w- would you say, do you know that 50 percent of people are yeah. either gay or know someone that's <laughs> gay? That's how you would <laughs> yeah. like, that was my, get them in bed, pick up line. And, oh, and so that's kind of how I I, I kind of managed through my early to mid 20s. I would go out with my straight friends in pursuit of hooking up with women. Uh, never happened. So I was like, all right, well, I'll find a guy to hook up with. And so that's kind of how that happened. Uh, and then one day I stumbled, literally stumbled up across the man sitting next to me, Kendall, uh. at, at uh, a bar here in Houston, JR's. And I was out with a, um, with a friend of mine who's straight, who I hooked up with two of his friends. Who he, I, I didn't know he, this is the reason I asked him, was, oh, was, 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 was there chatter at the time? Because he, 
he I didn't know he knew at the time that I hooked up with his friends, but he apparently like he knew. Yeah. Like it was on the same road trip. It was a week road trip. I hooked up with his friend, his roommate in Beaumont, and then his best friend, one of his good friends in Atlanta. Uh, and then I hooked up with a girl that same week later. So it was just a bit. It was like a bad. Like, wow, was this the seventies? Yeah, no. <laughs> But anyways, I, 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 I did all that. So I hung out with this guy. He, we're, he's in town visiting from like, I don't know. He's out of, he was out of the country. He was like, I'm going to be in Houston. Let's meet up. So we went to dinner. Uh, we meet with a, f- a co-worker of his who's gay. We're just pounding back drinks. We're like having a good time. Uh, we wind up at Howl at the Moon because they're like, yeah. oh, let's, but it's like a Tuesday night. Or no, it was a Thursday night. I remember distinctly now. So Thursday night, they say, uh, his gay friend was like, you guys should go to this bar, JR's. They, and we were like, no. He's like, it's a gay bar. It's cool, though. We're like, and we're like, no, no, no. I'm not going, we're not going to gay bar. He and I were like looking at each other. Like, we've been to gay bars. Not cool. Like, we, we hang out and try to find Meanwhile, you'd slept with both of them. Either, e- even though, <laughs> no, I didn't hang out with the straight. Didn't, mm. didn't hook up with either one of those guys. Mm. The other guy's straight, so no. Um, but but it was off his game. But, like, I was like, I don't go to gay bars. And the only time I've been with Ugh. gay bars was with this friend and... Oddly He's enough, I, I did hang out. I, the last time I went to a gay bar with that guy, I did hook up with one of his friends at the gay bar. But anyways, um, Any we're, we're at Howl at the Moon, and all of a sudden, his gay friend is like, but they have karaoke at JR's. And I'm like, ah. yeah, He dropped his panties for karaoke. And if you know me, I'd, like, I'd, I'd love to sing a karaoke song. And what better forum than going to JR's at a gay bar that I never go to and don't know anyone there. So I'm like, I can sing whatever song and be as awful, as great as I want. And I'm, I'm going to go it. sing. So I went. So we went. We were like, yeah, cheers, karaoke. We go. I lose my friend and his buddy. And I'm like staring. Like I'm, it's closing time. I'm stumbling on the, on the, uh, on the stairs. And all of a sudden I see... From, from what I remember, this beautiful specimen. I see these of a blue man. eyes, uh, Kendall, and uh, we started chatting, I guess. And then I vaguely remember getting a handheld and being. Oh, I know through, you're going with that. Walk to a car, and uh, then the next morning I remember waking. Well, here I'll, t- I'll, I'll take it from there. Yeah. Since you say you don't remember it, I'll take I don't. It from I there. don't. Well, it was closing time, and I was like, I don't have much time because I'm a gets mine tonight. <laughs> And he's over there. What's like, left? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which I was couldn't see straight, so so sorry. He for was him. wobbly That's over an there. Easy target. Yeah. <laughs> and I went up to him and said hi. He said hi. I said your place. Tom's like I stumbled upon him. It's like no, Kendall literally beelined it across the bar. <laughs> I said your place or mine. After I said hi, he said. Uh, I live close. So I guess it could be mine. <laughs> I said, let's go. And then we walk back to his car, and he says, you know I'm straight, right? I said, okay. And then he said, no, really, I'm straight. So I said, what the hell are we going to do at your apartment? He said, fair enough. So we went. Did things, homosexual things that you couldn't do in Kentucky in 1972. Right. Um, 92, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then the next day he wakes up and my work is calling and my phone's about to die and I wake him up and say, I need to use your charger. And he went, ah! Because then he remember you? Yeah, <laughs> while I had hooked up with people before, I'd never had anyone, I'd never brought a guy back into my bedroom. And so this was the first time that happened. And then as I wake up to like, then I'm like, okay, well, do I need, I guess I need to take you home. And so I, I'm taking him home and he makes some cheeky comment about like, cause I have change spattered throughout my, um, I used to smoke a bar at 51 cents. Yeah. He's like, Oh, he so had pennies I, everywhere. I guess you keep, keep the place tidy or something cheeky. And I was something Kendall like, and I was like, Oh, this kid's kind of funny. Like, okay, that's kind. And so I drop him off at, he lost his keys like per usual. Uh, and so I had to drop him off at Chili's where Martha was his roommate at the time. And so she could give him the keys and he, I'm dropping him off and I'm like, well, it's nice to meet you. We're chatting the whole way. We had a good conversation. And, uh, he, he, he was like, gets out of the car. He's like, well, nice to meet you. I see you around. And I was just like, but I, I, I think I like you. And I'm in my head, I'm saying this, I didn't say this out loud. Cause I was straight. Of course. And, and so I, um, I didn't get his number and I was like, fuck me. Like that was like, I so liked then him. How did y'all reconnect? So then, well, first of all, my thinking was he's not out of the closet. I'm not hand holding. I'm not going yeah, through you're that like, whole I, journey. Yeah, I agree. It's like, I don't like, want to Like that's an ordeal. Yeah. I, I don't have time for that. 
Yeah, he was he was plenty busy, so he didn't worry about me. So uh, so at the time there was this emerging social media platform called MySpace, which I wasn't on. I, everyone, all my friends were on, and I was like, "This is stupid. I'm not gonna be on MySpace." MySpace. But I started a MySpace page just to find Kendall Satcher because he get said, the fuck out. Yeah, he was like, what he told me was, "I'm a refugee from New Orleans," and I was like, "Oh, okay. Oh no, he said he was from New Orleans." So because the conversation, where are you from? He's like, "I'm from New Orleans." I'm like, "Oh, you're a refugee." He's like, "Mm-hmm." Although he denies that to this day that he's. Oh my that. God, let's not get into that. Anyways. He said that, so I, I looked up Kendall's, you know, and, and there it was, this little picture was, this little shaved head, and I was like, oh, he's cute. And so Kendall's like, wow, I'm his only connection on MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I knew instantly. Yeah. He, Tom, you know, the founder of MySpace, everyone's first friend on MySpace is Tom. Tom was his only friend. <laughs> <laughs> I said this, and I started a MySpace page so to I find me. So I messaged him. He messaged me back, well, days later, though, because I was like, oh, it must be because he's a flight attendant. It's, it's not like, I'm going to play like hard me. to get. So mm-hmm. he finally, he was. And then finally, uh, I got him to agree to go, because I was like, I really like this guy. He's funny. He's cute. Like, Stunning. Like, a good time. And so looks, um, good, amazing. looks good in a two-piece. So I was like, okay, we're going to... I'm gonna go on a date, like I and I was very nervous because I was like, "Oh shit!" Like this means I'm like making the leap to being like, "I'm on." You're gay. Yeah, he's I'm not gay. theoretically gay so, anymore. So is this the first time you admitted it to yourself? Well, it was the first time. Like I, I, I had a connection with him, and so I was just like, "I need to see where this goes." And I was like, "This is beyond like men and women." Like I like this person, right? I think I'm, mm-hmm. there's a connection here. So we went on a date. That's when I was a human. Do you remember what? That first date was at Little Woodrow's. Yeah, and you showed up and you reeked of you had gone to a bonfire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know if you had fallen into the bonfire or something, but you just smell like you smell like brisket. I took like four showers when I because I was nervous because I was like I went to this like my, one of my it was friends, like being on a date with a plate of brisket. My friend Alan, what up, Alan? Who listens to and, and hey, Alan, thank uh, you for listening. Yeah, and uh, so I went over to his place and. Uh, and they he and his they were hosting a, a like just barbecue so me and some friends went over and uh they i was sitting right next to the smoker and he was showing off his smoker because he had this nice home whatever and i was sitting right next to it and i was like oh my god i was driving back home like i well i was there they were like oh we're gonna get trashed tonight because that's what we do and and i was like no i gotta go and they were like oh you're leaving so early i'm like gotta go gotta go so i leave and i'm like smelling myself they thought you had diarrhea i'm like oh my god i smell i took four showers no lie and i still still can't get it out yeah yeah i was next to that smoker and uh, even his bush smelled like it later that night. <laughs> so we went to Little Woodrow's. Little did I know, like I, I was like, "Do you want to go to Little Woodrow's?" He said, "Yes." But if you know Kendall, he's not a beer drinker. Mm. So, which at the time, Little Woodrow's only served beer. They didn't have liquor like they do now. So we're drinking beer. He drank a Heineken, which I've never. I think seen I you, pointed to something. And I've said never I'll seen take you that. drink a Heineken since then. Amy uh, loves Heineken. And, beer loves. <laughs> And so, I but, like Heine. but then I was like, okay, let's go to the real bar. And so we went to this bar that me and my straight friends used to go uh, to coaches. Uh, I mentioned that because this is going to come back in the story. Uh, and we got tanked. I'm like, shots, shots, shots. And then, because the only way I knew how to hook up with a gay person, with a gay man, was to be drunk. Like, that's like, because I never had a same a gay hookup so when you were so were you and so that's like okay this one. so anyway still hasn't and yeah. did you have to do that to mentally like in order for you to mentally do it that's what you had to do yeah 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 because yeah. so, then i uh, that was the, how i rationalized again i talked about like i wasn't how in I my right state whole time. of mind yeah i was drunk so it was like i only oh, do it so when it i'm okay. drunk when you yeah. said i drugged you for years do you still think i drugged you i was so hung over the next so the first night we hooked up like i was so hung over like awfully hungover and i feel bad and i remember distinctly that day because there was a fright like one of the a friday in december i would pick to go take my grandmother uh christmas shopping for my cousins and we would go buy presents for them uh and i showed up late like i puked three times to i told my grandmother i was going to be there at 10 10 o'clock in the morning i didn't leave my house till noon I puked two times along the freeway, along I-45, to get to my grandmother's house. She wasn't there when it because I was. That's late. what happens when you fall in love. Uh, I fell asleep. I fell asleep in the front seat of my car. In her uh, house. At her house. She got there and didn't even bother to wake me up because she was mad. Because uh, you were we, what three or four hours late. Yeah. So then I finally went shopping and then I went back home like and I puked. Anyways, it was awful, awful day. Um, he was supposed to bring the pupusas. 
No. So anyway, so where are we? So finally, but so all this stuff related to Kindle is important because Kindle was the first person I was like, okay, I I'm gonna, think this, I'm gay. this is more than a hookup. Like I have a connection to this person. And uh, so we started hanging out uh, more. It was more on a hookup basis. And then we started hanging out more of like, oh, we're going to hang out not just in hookup like mode. Like and, during the day. Yeah, Let's during the day. Movie, yeah. We're going to hang out as people. Um, I'm going to tell you my real name now. Yeah. Oddly enough, he. I remember he <clears throat> tried to help hold my hand in the car one time. And I was like, I was not like I had a violent reaction. No, to that. that was on the couch in yeah. the privacy of your own apartment. And yeah. You were like, you didn't blink the rest of the night. I was like, uh, which is now so interesting because Spencer and I are like constantly like yeah. flailing our hands nonstop. But uh, so I've come a long way in the last 10, 11 years. So Spencer, you can thank Kittle for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so, but we started to get through the first brick at with that stone wall. So we started to get serious, and that's when I was like, I need to start telling people because we would hang out in Midtown, which was a popular area. Yeah, and I got to a point where like popular I, straight area. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, well, all his friends were straight, which were all my friends friends were straight, and we would hang out often. And I got to a point where I was like, I want Kendall to be around my friends. Yeah. I want him to meet my friends, and I don't want to like hide this part because it was I was compartmentalizing it. And so I tried to come out to my friend at a wedding that we were at. We were in Arkansas of all places, and I was like. It was my friend Kim. I'm like, Kim, I have something to tell you. And she's like, what? And so later she tells me, she's like, and I and I didn't tell her that night, but I, I, because she wound up hooking up with someone. <laughs> Who was the cute? Uh, yeah, no. It was okay. But they, in our room, because she and I were sharing a room, because we were like <laughs> wedding dates all the time. But anyway, she... Uh, so you watched. She was like, yeah, I threw the, the, the key. Was hole. it hot? Uh, no. Well, I, I, no, no, no. Anyways, uh, did you sniff the sheets? I did afterwards. I was like, Oh, this smells like sex. <laughs> so she, I didn't tell her, but I was like, I'm going to have, I was, it was on the tip of my tongue. So I, at that point in may, I'm like, I'm going to tell people. So I finally got to, it took me a little bit longer. So July 4th of that year, I, I started to tell people. And the way I told folks was I took a very, uh, common method to telling my friends. And I told my friends before I told my family. So uh, it, was, it was actually the night before July 4th. It was July 3rd because July 4th I was going to host a little uh, gathering at my apartment <clears throat> and, and the apartment uh, and the garage because you could see the fireworks. So I was going to bring people over and I was like, I want Kendall to be there. <coughs> Kendall. And so, but the night before I had one, of my friend Kim and then I had some other friends. Interestingly, there was another friend of mine who was, I think, somewhat interested in me but she was always playing hard to get so i was like Ma, i don't care fuck her <clears throat> so i we don't these friends are all are you know we're all hanging out at this bar coaches which is we used to hang out all the time and i'm texting kendall i'm like come over i want you to meet my friends and he's like Ugh. i'm like no i really want you to come over and so i started telling my friends like kendall's like oh i'm i'm here in the parking lot and i, I bought a round of shots for my friends i'm like all right cheers everybody I want you guys to know that I may or may not finally be dating someone because I hadn't dated anyone since the girl I was in love with in college. Uh, I may or may not be dating someone, and it may or may not be a guy, and it may or may not be Kendall. Cheers. Right as I walk up, you know. Cheers. And everyone looks at me like, what? And they see Kendall, and they're like, oh, what's going on? And they're all freaked out. I'm like, yeah. And I'm I'm clinking shot glasses. I'm like, cheers, everybody. And they take the shot, and everyone's just like, what I made that debut so many times because you had like twenty coming out, so and that's how I did it multiple people. times. And like, you would always be like, "And this is my boyfriend." Which, and, and when I say that, I asked the question again: where the, was there chatter afterwards? Because I re realized, like my friend Kim, she was like, "Oh yeah, I called all these people afterwards." And, and like, so, did you know? Like, yeah, what the fuck? She, and, yeah. and she was like, and she said she was crying. It's like she called her mom. She called another good friend like, of sad, ours. Like sad joy. I don't know. It was just shock. like shock. I think a lot of people were like, "How didn't? You, why didn't you tell me that you were gay?" And I'm like, "Well, there wasn't a secret. Yeah, yeah. Because, made it about them because I didn't." I didn't come out in a like I want to have a serious conversation with you. It's just like, his, be my boyfriend, right? Yeah. And so, um, so there was that. But I did that probably for the next four weeks in a row. There was different groups of friends, like part okay, of that yeah. circle. I was just introducing new people. But I, most of the feedback I got was, why didn't you tell me sooner? Like why didn't you tell me? The coolest reaction I got was from my sister though, uh, because my sister I tell her after. So I told my family, weeks after I started telling my friends. Uh, because, uh, so my sister's in town. I'm like, we're hanging, she's hanging out at the bars with us. And I'm like, I got to tell you something. Cause at that time, my 
soon to be brother-in-law was hanging out in Midtown as well. And I'm like, he's going to see me out with Kendall, like, and he's going to oh, tell my sister. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't have that happen. So I go and tell my sister, I'm like, hey, I got something to set, tell you. I said, because, and again, we're at the bar, music's loud. I'm like, because uh, your your boyfriend at the, uh, boy, his boyfriend at the time, I said, is out in mid- Midtown a lot. I said, I see, I can potentially see him and I just want to let you know something. And she's like, okay, uh-huh, what? I was like, I may or may not have a boyfriend. I may or may not, you know, he may or may not be this guy, Kendall. And I said, cheers. And she's like, oh, cheers. And so her reaction was like, we take the shot. And she's like, oh, my gosh. She's like, I thought you were going to tell me my boyfriend was cheating on me. <laughs> she's like, I didn't care. She's like, so cool. Thank I'm glad, God you're, I'm just glad you're finally Kendall. dating someone. Oh, you're just gay? Yeah. Oh, thank God. I thought you were going to tell me. So, and so I told my sister. And then like two weeks later, I told my dad. You did? It was okay. sad to tell my I told my dad before my mom, which I was. I had always been closer to my mom, I guess. Um, but I told my dad because my dad came into town. And my dad's one of these like machismo people. And he, you know, we hung out on a rare event. Like he came in on a Thursday night. We, we drank at the bars, which was kind of his, his thing. The next day we go to, I remember we went to like shopping at Macy's or Dillard's or whatever. And he's dropping me off. And before my dad, he was, when he came in that weekend, he was trying to tell me, he was like, why don't you ever let me come into town? You're always too busy. Why don't you ever just let me come in? What are you dating someone like dating a guy? And so that's what he always tell me and so that day he's dropping me off we have this very nice father-son moment and i'm getting out of his truck i was like by the way dad i just want to let you know like you keep teasing me about like uh if i'm dating a guy i actually am dating a guy and he just went okay son and that was it he was in shock probably in complete shock went into depression so yeah went into such a depression that my mom was really worried my parents are divorced right my mom but they wow. talk very, yeah. she noticed I had, hadn't told my mom, my sister got my, my, my mom was going to my sister, like, what is wrong with your dad? Like, I'm really worried about him. So my sister felt compelled to like tell my mom. So my mom knew before I, I told her. And so when I finally did tell my mom, like my sister was like, she already knows, <laughs> but I tell her over uh, like uh, we're at a lunch and she starts just crying. She's like, I'm fine, but I just want you to, but, I mean, her concern was that, you know, I was going to being a gay person it's a tougher like, life yeah 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 and so i like uh, yes i she was doing some more of the grieving like like i think yeah. most you know parents do when they have a perception of their their kids or what their lives are going to be but she was quickly like i'm just worried about your safety uh and i told her fine but once i met kendall it was it was fine well at least my mom and my sister my dad <laughs> dad on the other hand how long did it take your dad to a, just get out of his depression where he's not like, holy shit, and then... He's still depressed to this day. I no, think he still a, is. No, no. no he's But he, he's still kind of not... He's still not totally embraced it. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I, I tell Spencer, I'm like, Kendall paved a good way for you because not until that last day, that, that weekend that Kendall and I broke up did my dad acknowledge it. Uh, Kendall, it was the last, it was the last week, it was the weekend Kendall and I broke up. My dad finally like extended a handshake to Kendall and we're like, it was good hanging out with you. It was talking to me, like directly to yeah. me. And I'm oh, like, oh, Cause yeah. he never did that. My dad would go visit us in Virginia, like at our, at our home there. Um, didn't like, would talk past Kendall, like never di- addressed him directly. Wow. We would say hi and bye. And I tried to talk, but it was so obvious that yeah. it, yeah. And so, so it was very awkward. But now he's like, he, he like he included Spencer on a group text one time. I'm like, Spencer, oh, wow. this is a big deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. and so I was like, this is a big deal. And he'll he'll address Kendall. He'll, I mean, Spencer, he'll say hi because he won't address even to this day. So he won't address Kendall, but he'll address Spencer. Because I'm the reason you're. He'll, he'll give him a handshake and like he he acknowledges. He likes. Uh, he teases though. He's like, I I liked and and I say this in all good jest because this is a good sign for Spencer. Um, he was like, I liked Kendall. Kendall because Spencer and I are very affectionate. He was like, because Kendall was never that affectionate too. My, the, I think it, it makes my dad uncomfortable that mm-hmm. you know the expression that Spencer and I have. Because um, you know, some people are like, "Oh, it's okay that you're gay, but just don't throw yeah, it in my face." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Spencer and I are definitely throwing it in their face. Yeah, uh, but but proudly. And so I, uh, yeah. So that's my coming out story. Wow. So a long-winded story, but I think it was like necessary because i it was different yeah, yeah. than yeah it's never guys. easy yeah, yeah. to just make an elevator speech of your like yeah. this is how it came out yeah. real quickly and yeah. it came out in several like uh, when i say it was like and 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 kendall says it was 
over several weekends. It was seriously like it was over dead. months. There's more friends. There's more friends. Yeah, and, and I do people, feel it's a process for people, right? I mean, and they it was so weird the reaction because a lot of them. I, I had a lot. I had some friends after I so. I told folks on the tail end of me living in Houston before I moved to, to Virginia. And after I moved from Houston, I lost a lot of friends. Like they started to lo- like lose contact. Mm. And, and I think it was because they, they were like, well, we didn't approve of that anyway. So, which is sad. Like I lost friends because I yeah, came out. It like, was well, uncomfortable. A, a yeah. girl that I knew from high school that was a good friend of mine stopped talking to me altogether. She was Isn't always, that crazy? she always yeah. deemed me her best friend. Uh, and so, I mean, there were people that were crying. Like, it was so weird. Like, I, and I yeah. don't say this because of me. I, I, it's a reflection of, like, how people internalize this. Like, oh, it's this is about me. Yeah. I'm like, I had a girl. I had one friend cry. She didn't cry in front of me. The, the, the first night, she didn't cry in front of me. But she said later, oh, I went to my car and cried. Another girl just flat out, like, walked out of the bar, walked to the restroom, yeah. and just broke down. Um, and this is a girl that doesn't really talk to me anymore. So... Uh, so it's, it's so you, strange. You know, it's funny you say that because um, so in your coming out story, it seems like your coming out was kind of painful, like versus mine, where it's like everybody knew since I was a baby, like who cares? So growing up, I kind of hated it because I couldn't hide the fact that I was gay. And so I think I faced and I was never really bullied. I was very fortunate. I was never really bullied as a kid. In high school, there were like a couple people, but most of my, you know, discrimination in high school was like, oh, you're a nerd. Like, all you do it, like, you're studying and you get straight A's. Um, so I have a friend that, you know, we, we were best friends since before grade school. And in my mind, you know, when we got to like junior high and especially high school, we just kind of went our separate ways. Like all I did was study and work and he was involved in whatever other stuff. And so you just naturally evolve, you know? And so I thought that was it. And so he, um, a couple of years ago, I went home for Christmas and his mom was like, ah, oh. she said, well, Charlie thinks he's gay. And I was like, what? And, uh, I had never noticed. And so I had just texted him and I said, Hey, sorry, I missed you at Christmas, you know? And he said, we need to talk, you, you know. All I just said was, hey, sorry I missed you at Christmas. You weren't able to come into town. He goes, I'd really like to talk to you if you, have, if you have time. And so we connected. And he said, I'm really sorry for the way I treated you all those years. And I said, what do you mean treated me? And he goes, oh, he goes, if you didn't notice, he goes, I started to disown you like in junior high because as soon as like everybody was like, oh, Tony's gay, I had to dissociate mm-hmm. myself with you. And he said, I was always jealous because he said, everybody always knew you were gay. And so I felt, well, it's no big deal for him to come out. And he said, nobody ever knew I was gay. And so he said, it just, it was so hard for me. And he, so he just came out like two years ago. And so he, he's like, I always felt like, man, it's so hard for me to come out. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't feel that way. So in, in some instances i feel like your friend in terms of like i was the one who distanced myself from gay people that i knew in high school and which there weren't a lot of out people but there were people yep. that were obviously gay um uh, and then but i didn't to me it wasn't a big deal which i felt like my friends made it a bigger deal they're like, why didn't you tell me why didn't you take me to dinner like i had three or like, uh, three four friends that would tell me but- that you should have told me and i'm like to me I didn't. I didn't feel like I was any different, right? I mean, and I think that's the difference. As I talk to, like, as I hear your stories, like, now you can be like, I can be that person that I I have been hiding. Yeah. And to me, it was just like this was just an extension of myself. Like, I'd always knew that I was somewhat attracted to guys, yeah. also, and so I my personality hasn't changed. I'm the same person. I've and you know, been. we we talk about like we talked about with Tammy last week about. Um, you know, you have your personal coming out story and then your work coming out story. And I remember talking with some friends about this several years ago because we were all single at the time. And as far as work goes, like my friend John, he goes, you know, I think it's going to be a lot easier to come out at work when I have a partner because he said, right now, if somebody's like, what'd you do this weekend? You don't want to be like, well, I got wasted at Meteor. You know, because then it's like, not only are you like, you're outing yourself, but it's also like, whereas like, if you like, oh, Kendall and I went to dinner with friends, you know, you can drop like a Well, man- I have a female name, so they'd be like, oh, <laughs> what's she like? Or like, Thomas and I went to dinner with friends, you can like drop a male name and it's like, ouch you, but you're doing something normal, right. not like 
oh, you know, doing shots, you know, like, or tipping a dick dancer at JR's. Right. I mean, but hey, all on a day, right? I will say, though, it, it means the, the, the part of me coming out, though, was very eye-opening for a lot of my friends, straight friends, because they were like, oh, wow, we know a gay person. Because we didn't know, other than me, there yep. weren't any gay people that were, uh, that were there. And so it changed their perception. Again, some people kind of backed off. They, yep. they were offended, and uh, they didn't know how to process it. Other friends were like, yeah, we keep saying that's so gay all the time, and that's not cool. Like, they, and so they would stand yeah. up, and so they started the, you know, the whole point of us talking about this is being visible and helping our allies, yep. and straight people, realize that we're just like you, and we have rights, and but you know, we're entitled, well, not entitled, but we should have the same rights as everyone else. But the reality is, there's laws that are stacked against us, and so yep. you need to, f- we need those folks to know that we're normal people. And, they can and you know what? Them. Like, okay, so. I do feel when I first came out, I remember my very first, um, you know, the pride celebration where they announced the grand marshals, the uh, female grand marshal. She, uh, I mean, she got up and she was like, yeah, thank you. But here's my stump speech on you need to come out because how important it is it like. And I thought, oh, is it really that important to come out? And just this week I had two instances like one. So last Saturday. I go to this brewery with a bunch of straight friends, and this one guy, I had just met him a couple weeks ago through my friends Mark and Andrew. He goes, Tony, I have this party after this. He goes, you need to come with me. He goes, there's a guy there. He's really cool. I think you you guys would mesh. You know, he goes, I want you to meet this guy. And I was like, okay. Whoa, is he cute? Whoa. <laughs> and he is cute. Oh, all and right, And so Tony. I was like, so how long have you known him? He goes, well, I've known him four years. And I said, well, what's his story? And he goes, I don't really know much about him. And I was like, but you've known him four years. And he goes, well, here's the deal. So this guy that I was talking to, he's from small town, Oklahoma. And he goes, I met this guy four years ago through a group of friends. And when I met him, like everyone's like, oh yeah, this is so-and-so, you know, he was gay. He goes, no offense. Don't support that. Don't really want anything to do with you. Let's just mutually agree that we're all part of the same group of friends. You go your way. I'll go mine. And so his the gay guy's like, take all the time you need. You ever want to be friends? Great. If not, who cares? You go your way. So he goes, literally, that guy just being himself and everyone, all my group of friends who I really like, value him, think he's cool. Over these three and a half, three, three and three quarter years of getting to know him, he's like, okay, maybe he's not so bad. And so he goes... I've really just gotten to know him the last couple months because I wouldn't even talk to him. And I was like, and that's kind of all he, but, and he goes, he's the one that, and he goes, it was my thing to get over. It wasn't anything he did. And then um, one of my friends contacted me this week. So he's, we've been friends for 10 years and we met through business school and he's very, um, like he was raised by, I think his dad was a preacher. Uh, He's pretty religious, whatever. And so when we met, um, I don't know exactly how close-minded he was in respect to the gay thing, but pretty. And he's the one that said, hey, I want to talk to you about your podcast. You've, like, opened my mind to a few things. And I'm like, okay. And he basically said, he's like, I look at you as you're gay, but, you know, you're also this well-rounded individual. And he didn't look at gay people like that 10 years ago. It was like, I don't know, but I think he probably, like we talked about Harvey Milk saying, we got to out Oliver Sipple because everybody thinks gay people are like pedophiles lurking in the bathrooms. Not that he was like, my friend Chris was like that much about it, but like he probably had a very like, very like, this is what gay people are. And it's like, by just knowing me, you know, so I do feel like come out, come out because it does change people's minds, you know, like just living your life day to day. It, and sometimes that happens when you're 14. Sometimes it happens when you're 24. Sometimes that's when you're you have 50. to be. Yeah, yeah it has, just, you have to be yeah. ready. It has and to be you the have right to be time ready to do it on your own and, terms. And, yeah. and I feel like we we may have oversimplified it. Like I, I will say, because when I came oh, out, like, I was I was older. I I felt okay where I was career wise. I felt 
that I comfortable with my group of friends. I knew that my parents would struggle with it, but I knew they loved me. Uh, and so, and you know, Tammy, we talked oh. about last week. She had that life. She said, "My mom threw me a lifeline. You could always come back." But yeah. and I knew my parents were gonna love me no matter what. And I knew yeah. my sister was gonna be there for me. And so, shout out to Veronica. Uh, and so I was, uh, and like I said, in the group of friends I had, I felt strong enough connection with them that. Maybe some of them were going to deflect, and if they find if they didn't want to hang out with me, I was okay with that, like because I was comfortable with myself, yep. and I, I I stressed that because that's where I was personally, and not everyone's like that. I mean, Kendall, I don't know where you were when you personally when you came out, like whether it was an easy decision, but I know a lot of folks like. I feel like we may have glossed over the simplicity of like no, oh, and we the came thing out. is like you know we may have because now we're like 10, 20 years after coming out, so it's like oh you know. But I remember everybody knew I was gay. And it's like there's this cloud between us. But even then, like my friend Mitzi, she is the most creative, artistic person I know, non judgmental. She could give it, who cares? I was so nervous to tell her. And she's known me since I was probably like three or four. So, of course, but I was like, <gasps> I mean, it's hard. It's yeah. like people that it's like, Mitzi, when I tell you this, you're like, uh, duh. But you're still like so nervous to tell people. Yeah. It's I mean, just, I, I it's hard. alcohol to do it. But I know some people, especially, you know, don't have families and uh, family and friend network that's going to be supportive. They contemplate yep. suicide. They plan, they think there's no other alternative. And yep. so, you know, the, the point is like, as Tammy again noted, like you, it's a dark time, but there's a there's and a it, light. And you know, I feel like okay, so somebody like you know Tammy, who we had last week. I mean, her story is she's from like Memphis slash Mississippi, moved to Houston. She was on the quiz show. Yeah, and so um, even though her family was supportive, in order for her to come out and live her lifestyle, it was in Houston where she doesn't know anybody, and she's. She doesn't have the every day when I get home from my day, I can talk to my mom. It's Because at that time, it's long-distance telephone calls. Yeah. And so you are kind of – even though you have the support, you're kind of on your own. You've got to build your your community of support. And so it's – even though you – she wasn't facing a I'm disowning you, it's still hard because you're like, okay, I have no friends here. I've got to, like, build from the ground up. So, yeah, it's it's not easy, but – it's not easy. It's worth it. But there's a great community here waiting for you, right? Well, if you if you are there is yes, uh, I would say, yeah, very much. So, yeah, I just gonna part with this. It's some words from the Human Rights Campaign, the HRC. So, coming out, whether it's a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or allied, still matters. When people know someone who is LGBTQ, they are far, far more likely to support equality under the law. Beyond that, our stories can, our stories can be powerful to each other. And, and again, I, I think it's important, LGBTQ+, plus, as well as allies, it's important to be an out, out, out Very ally. much, yeah. We yeah. like you at the pride parades. We like you coming and supporting us. We like you, even though it's annoying sometimes, because you take all the seats. We like your gay sons. Hamburger Marys. I'm like, we we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, And so it it is important for us to be out. I mean, I know this is going long, but I feel it's very good. And, like, sometimes we talk about, like, you know, some people that go to Hamburger Marys, like, look at us as, like, oh, let's go see the freaks. But I do feel, in a way, that's a little incrementally better than I won't even think think about going to a place that does that i mean hamburger marriage is a drag restaurant that you have to have reservations to and it's like overwhelming yeah, which two years ago you clientele. didn't need to have which speaks to the to your point the progress of like people yeah, yeah. are willing and so to even though in. some people are like okay it's kind of weird but let's go it's like better than ah, what a bunch of weirdos i wouldn't even think about yeah. going there which you the, know it's somewhat i mean and kendall's talked to this before it's it speaks to kind of where we were like 30, 40 years ago, because in the 70s, those same places would have been crowded. But because of the AIDS crisis and all the mm-hmm. politics around it, people shunned away. But I think now, finally, we're starting to see the light. Despite all the nastiness that's out there with the you know the current political situation, I think we're, we are definitely making progress. So our coming out stories. That's awesome. I appreciate you guys sharing that. Like, it's a great story to, to tell. I mean, maybe it's long-winded if you're listening, but I, I think, you know, it just kind of shows the I journey. I do feel it's important, though, yeah. In terms of how, how we got to, to where we are today. Um, 
Okay, a few reminders, right? One reminder. Monday, October the 7th is the last register day to register to vote. Register to vote in Texas. In Texas. So register to vote, whether you're in Texas or wherever you are, uh, because it matters. Be ready for next year. Not yeah. just in 2019, but in 2020. So thank you for listening to our podcast and kicking with us. A special thank you to Spencer. Spencer, you you did some Spencer. nice uh, dips for us to, to go into. Buffalo. Cheesy. Buffalo, buffalo chicken. Cheesy puffalo chicken bread roll and the Neiman Marcus dip. Perfect. We loved it. Uh, and thank you for, for all of it. And th- I, it was cool to see your, you sporting your your new Our Spoopy podcast shirt. Those Ooh. are now out and available. All I right. Do oh. Don't forget to subscribe so you can hear future episodes. Give us a, a review if you don't mind. Visit our website at let's talk about gay stuff.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at let's talk about gay stuff and on Twitter at talk gay stuff. Tell us what you think about us. We'd love the feedback. And if you don't want to do it in public, you can drop a line at let's talk about gay stuff at gmail.com. Uh, again, our friends at Spoopy Pod, our, our Spoopy Podcast. Uh, can't wait for you to listen to them. They have a great uh, slate of shows for Spoopy Month here in October. So give them a listen. And uh, thanks for listening. So we're here. We're queer. Get used to it.